Thank you. Economics, Department Chair Kathleen McGarry, professors of economics, parents and family members, guests, and most importantly, graduating students of the class of 2016. It's a great honor to be here with fellow Bruins to share your graduation day. 36 years ago, I was like you, at UCLA, at my graduation ceremony with my friends and family, waiting to receive my UCLA diploma with a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics. Much has changed since my graduation, but much remains the same. UCLA continues to be, by far, the finest university in Southern California. <laughs> One of the best public universities in America, and UCLA's economics department continues to rank among the highest of all economic departments in the nation. The professors haven't changed too much either. <laughs> Professor John Riley was one of my economics professors, as he has been for many of you. And of all the professors I had during my time at UCLA, he had the biggest impact on me and my future. I would like all of us to acknowledge his 43 years of service to UCLA and its economics department. Now, there is one big difference. At my commencement, we didn't have a commencement speaker. And I hope in a few minutes, you're not wishing that you didn't have one either. <laughs> We've all heard it said that youth is wasted on the young. I didn't believe that when I was your age, but at 57, I believe it wholeheartedly. Recently, recently however, I heard the phrase that wisdom is wasted on the old. That's because the young rarely listen to the old or take her advice. This starts at birth. The young child is told not to touch the hot stove, but does it anyway. The teenager is told not to drink alcohol or party too hard, but invariably does it anyway. Many times the lessons of life have to be learned through experience. They can't be taught. After graduation, you will begin the most meaningful and powerful phase of your life. As you commence this new journey, keep in mind, if you want to know what lies on the road ahead of you, then it's best to ask someone who is on their way back. In your life, among the questions you will consider, perhaps not yet, but someday, are how do I live a life of meaning and a life of purpose? In essence, how do I live my life wisely? This will be determined by the paths you choose in your life. The question is how to choose the right path. First, I want to talk of your career. Let me share with you that for many of you, the career you've chosen to start off with will not be the career that you will ultimately pursue. And that may be a good thing. When I graduated from UCLA 36 years ago, I was on my way to Harvard Law School. Since the age of 13, I was convinced that I wanted to be a lawyer. However, after my second year at the law school and after interning at large law firms in my summers, I began to question a career in law. As the work did not capture my imagination and I was concerned I would not be happy as a lawyer. I could see my unhappy future as a lawyer. For one thing, I didn't enjoy writing. However, I knew I had a gift for numbers and things that were quantitative. I also knew from my economics education that I liked business. The year I graduated from Harvard Law School, less than 5% of the graduates pursued a position outside of law or government. I was fortunate. I was offered a position as a consultant at the international consulting firm Bain & Company. However, unlike my business school counterparts, I did not have an MBA education and no relevant work experience. And if I chose the business path and I failed, it would be difficult to return to law. For the first time in my life, I had hit the proverbial fork in the road regarding what to do about my career. I could stay on the path that I was on, take my Harvard Law degree, and go take a job at a large multinational law firm. Or I could change course, take a completely different path, a path for which I was less prepared, a path of far greater uncertainty, but a path for which I was far more excited. 
make no mistake, I was scared, and I was way out of my comfort zone. I recall telling my father, who was a lawyer, that after graduating, I was considering dropping law and pursuing a career in business. He was quiet for what seemed like an eternity, and he stated to me in no uncertain terms, don't be an idiot. <laughs> now, in matters like these, you need to be true to yourself. You need to listen to your inner voice, really feel what's in your heart, and rely on your intuition, for it does know the answer. So, I chose to be an idiot. And as I chose the path of business instead of law, and for me, that has made all the difference. There will be those times in your life when you will face the choice to either continue on the steady and relatively safe path that you are on, or to break away and pursue a wholly different path, a path of greater passion, but also of greater uncertainty that leads to an entirely different future. There will be those moments. These moments will tell you about your character. They will tell you about your confidence, your aptitude for risk, and most importantly, your courage. Courage doesn't mean you don't get afraid. Courage means you don't let fear stop you. And these moments will define your life because stepping forward into the unknown leads to a life not of fear, but of confidence, not of uncertainty, but learning that you control your life and your outcomes. And instead of, instead of wondering what life could have been to a life of what is and of experiencing all that is possible. Now your work, your career is gonna feel more of the remaining time in your life than anything else. So it's important to get this right. I've heard dozens of commencement speeches and every one, every single one has some variation of pursue your passion and reach for the stars. Well, if all I had to do was pursue my passion, I would have been a professional baseball player or a rock star. <laughs> the only problem is I can't hit a curveball, and my singing is so bad, my voice doesn't sound good even in the shower. <laughs> I'm not saying that pursuing your passion is wrong. What I'm saying, it's only partially right. In choosing a career, there are three things to consider. Find out what your passion is, whether you are good at it, and does the world value it? Every person has a natural talent, math, writing, music, teaching. You need to find out yours and then apply it in a field that you enjoy. You will know it when you find it. Your inner voice, your gut will tell you. But finding your passion is not sufficient. You have to be honest with yourself as to whether you are good at it. And if you're good at it, then determine whether the world values it. If it is all three things, then you have found a wonderful career match. If you're not good at it, or the world doesn't value it, then it could be a great hobby, but it will not be a career. There's a paperweight I have on my desk in my office that states, your only obligation in your lifetime is to be true to yourself. It has two meanings for me. First, live a life with integrity and honor. You don't do this for others. You do it for yourself. Whatever you do, act with honesty and integrity. Give your word and keep it. If you're not honest, your reputation will be shattered and a good reputation can rarely be regained. There is a saying, if you have integrity, nothing else matters. And if you don't have integrity, nothing else matters. Sometimes there are real consequences to maintaining your integrity and the decision to do so may be very difficult. You may lose a lucrative opportunity or promotion, which is hard to pass up even when it's not deserved. However, opportunities gained but not earned are hollow. And what's the get value of gaining much but doing it through deception? Keep in mind, no one can take away your honor. Only you can give it away. And once lost, you can never get it back. So long as you maintain your integrity and honor, you will have something that money cannot buy. 
inner peace, and the respect of the person who matters most, you. Second, being true to yourself means living a life that you want, not someone else's expectations of you. We may get inspiration from others, Nelson Mandela, Steve Jobs, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, your parents. But we are not them, just as they, aren't, just as they weren't somebody else. They blaze their own path. You are yourselves. You're unique as compared to anyone else today or who has ever been. You have dreams and goals, go after them. But don't blame others if you fail. In my career, two people stand out for me. In the mid-1980s, a woman who was a senior vice president and ran the biggest, big, biggest business at a large technology company. She was way ahead of her time as a woman in a senior executive position and in high tech, no less. She was asked, how did she, as a woman, rise to such a position? Her answer was, she never thought of herself as a woman and therefore never thought of herself as disadvantaged. She simply had to be better than everyone else. The second in the 1990s was a CEO I worked for. He was born in Shanghai, immigrated to the United States, and he rose to be the first Chinese immigrant who was not a company founder to become the CEO of a US semiconductor company. In a press interview, he was asked, how did he accomplish that? And he stated, he wasn't aware he was the first, and he didn't think of himself as a Chinese businessman, simply a businessman. Was it easy for them? No. Did they have to overcome prejudice and discrimination? Yes. These, at any point in their career, these two people could have blamed their gender or ethnicity when they didn't move up the corporate ladder as fast as they believed they should. But they didn't. You give yourself excuses to not succeed when you define yourself by your gender or ethnicity. Successful people believe that they control their life and their outcomes and never think of themselves as victims. They have no sense of entitlement. The world doesn't owe them anything. You live in a time where any opportunity is open to you. Whether you succeed in it will be up to you and only you. And what will it be like pursuing your career and striving to get ahead? Know that you'll be judged and tested constantly every day. There will be no safe spaces in the world outside of college. Hard work does not necessarily lead to prosperity, but it makes it much more likely to. You already know that life is not fair, but that does not take away your obligation to be fair to others. You will also find that life can be humbling. Your, your career is unlikely to be straight up. There will be bumps along the way. You will have triumphs and successes, but you will also have failures and disappointments. It's how you react to both, but particularly the failures and disappointments that will teach you more about who you are. A failure may shake your confidence. It may dissipate your energy, but you cannot give up. You have to keep moving forward. I know that that's easy to say, and sometimes very hard to do. But let me tell you, if in the face of disappointment, fear, loss, or rejection, if you can keep moving forward, then you will succeed not just in your career, but in life itself. Many in my generation are concerned by certain trends in today's millennial generation. And I'm not talking about the drugs and the sex. A recent Harvard survey states that over half of Americans ages 18 to 29 do not support capitalism. With your UCLA economics education, there should be near unanimity from this group in your support for capitalism and free markets. Now, most of you will be, will be pursuing your career in the private sector. And whether or not you will admit it, hope to make lots of money. 
You should not feel guilty about succeeding or making money. As economists, you know that among the greatest contributions you can make to society is to create a business. Because to succeed, you will have to create a good or a service that didn't exist before. And in so doing, you will create jobs for others that may not exist without you. You know that a person that, amass that amasses wealth through building a successful company or creates a new invention should be admired, not vilified. This drives society forward and creates jobs for others. As economists, you know that in a competitive marketplace, One's creation of wealth does not take away from another. You also know that every generation of Americans has been better off than the generation before. If your generation is to be better off than mine, then you will only do it through competitive markets and capitalism. You may not realize it yet. I didn't when I was your age. But someday I hope you will. That to live a life of value, the relationships you have with others and helping others are necessary to give meaning to your life. During my career, I have impacted the lives of thousands of people, provided personal guidance to many, and donated substantial amounts of money to charity. However, of all the experiences that I have in helping others, one of the most rewarding occurred during my junior year at UCLA. I just didn't know it at the time. I had a job tutoring economics for the Academic Advancement Program. This program is designed to assist socially and economically disadvantaged children or students adjust to the discipline and work necessary to succeed at UCLA. I found many of the students were, were indeed struggling, and many had convinced themselves that they were not capable of high achievement and thus rarely surpassed their low expectations. Among the students I tutored was a sophomore student who was struggling in her Econ 1 class. She had gotten a C- minus on her first midterm, and she genuinely believed that she was not smart and that she should drop out of UCLA. As I tutored her, I realized she was quite intelligent, and I told her so. That she was capable of not just surviving at UCLA, but in thriving and that she should have much greater confidence in herself. She got a B-plus on the second midterm, and when she came in for her tutoring session, she couldn't wait to tell me. She was extraordinarily excited, to the point of tears. You could see she began to believe in herself, and she went on to getting a B as a final grade in the class. Now, eight years later, I'm living in San Francisco, and I'm walking toward my apartment building, and I hear a young woman's voice yell my name. I turn around, and this young woman is running toward me. She comes up to me and says, do you remember me? I said, no. <laughs> she went on to tell me that I had tutored her in economics at UCLA. It was then that I realized who she was. And I asked her, what happened to you after I stopped tutoring you? She told me she had graduated with honors in biology and went on to get a master's degree. I told her I was very happy for her and that I always believed that she could succeed. She told me it was all because of me. I told her, no, you did it, not me. She said, no, it is because of you. You believed in me when nobody else did, not even myself. And your encouragement and my succeeding in that economics class gave me the confidence to begin to believe in myself. This is meaningful for me because I changed the trajectory of one's life in a very positive way so she could rich, live a richer, more meaningful life. I have found that giving to others, not just money, but of your time, of yourself, is more fulfilling and it not only helps them, it's personally rewarding to you. As you pick up your diploma and begin the next journey in your life, remember, that to live your life wisely, pursue your passion, but make sure you're good at it and the world values it. Don't let fear stop you from taking risk and from stepping away from the safe path. Live your life with integrity and honor. 
You control your life and its outcomes. Don't blame others and don't be a victim. When life throws you a curveball, you must keep moving forward. And giving back to others is not just good for others, it's even better for you. If you do these things, you will live a life of meaning and a life of purpose. Now from one Bruin to another, go out and make us proud. Congratulations. <laughs>